In today's video, I want to talk about my second HSG test experience. I had this test done before. I had it done six months before my open myomectomy and it has been nine months since my open myomectomy where we removed all the fibroids and my fiance and I started trying to conceive um, three months after the open myomectomy. So we haven't gotten pregnant as of yet and I went to my OBGYN and asked if I could repeat the HSG to make sure that my tubes were open and that there weren't any blockages or anything like that. This second time around, the experience was so different. I'm gonna talk about my experience first and then I am going to talk about the results because I already know what the results are. When I went in for this test, I was so nervous because the first time that I did the HSG, it was so painful. I knew what I was gonna be getting myself into and I just felt like when you know kind of like what to expect because you've been through something, it heightens the anxiety, sort of. Scheduled the HSG and then I started doing castor oil packs every day. Like after my cycle ended, I started doing the castor oil packs for like one to two hours. And I know that you're only supposed to do it for like 30 minutes to an hour, but I was doing it for like one to two, maybe even three hours. And I came up with a tea mixture to unblock my tubes. I researched herbs that would help with inflammation, increasing blood flow to the womb, unblock tubes, unexplained infertility, like all of that. So I would drink it three times a day for four, maybe four or five days. I started drinking it after my cycle ended up until the night before my HSG test. Just take a, a teaspoon to um, eight ounces of water and I would, I would drink it like that. So the main ingredient in here is Don Quay and I, mix the Don Quay with other herbs. Um, but if you look up the benefits of Don Quay, girl, like it helps with unexplained infertility. It is a Chinese herb. Um, and so I did put in Don Quay as one of the main ingredients in here. And then I also did yoni steaming um, with Don Quay and other herbs to help um, with unblocking my tube. So. The first time that I had the HSG, I didn't do any of this. Like I went in just wanting to know what's going on straight like that. This time around, I was like, no, I'm going to try to do something to unblock. If there were any blockages, I had no idea because I just had surgery. I only did this for like five days. So I didn't even do all of this stuff for like at least a month or a couple of months decided to start doing this like five days before so i don't i have no idea if what i did had anything to do with my results or anything like that it was just something that i for my personal thing like i wanted to do my my part and i also yoni steamed the morning of the hsg <laughs> okay um, I did a, a really quick steam because the test was early in the morning so I only had like 10 or 15 minutes to do a quick steam and I did do a steam the morning of. Something else that I did in preparation for the test because my nerves were shot like I was so nervous about the pain so I actually blended a cup or I brewed a cup of um, blue vervain tea um, and I drank that the night before my test and also the morning of. Um, Blue Vervain has excellent anti-anxiety, anti-spasmodic um, properties. It helps relax the nerves. And I didn't want to be all tensed up when they went in to do the test. I wanted to be nice and relaxed. When I went in for the test, I 
This time around, my fiance drove me because he happened to be off from work that day. So he was able to drive me and he waited for me outside of the hospital um, until I was done. So um, it was basically like the same process. You go in, they tell you that, you know, you can't have any intercourse at least for 10 days before the test. Um, you can't have any signs of any present infections going on. And you just basically go in, they have you, you know, um, change into a gown. So I, I changed into a gown. Go in, you lay down, they tell you, um, you know, they're going to open up your, your cervix with the, um, oh my gosh, I can't even think of the name. No, they walk you through the whole experience. So they're supposed to tell you in advance what they're doing so you know to ease your anxiety they're gonna put the catheter inside and then um inflate the balloon to keep the catheter like in place and i remember the first time that i had the hsg test i felt the balloon inflated so i don't know if the first time around the doctor had a poor technique or didn't realize that he was not, not far enough, but I definitely felt that the first time. The second time when they inflated the balloon, I didn't feel it. And prior to that, you know, they clean, they clean uh, in there with uh, iodine or antiseptic swabs and stuff like that. Um, after it's been opened up, they clean, they put the catheter in, they inflate the balloon so it doesn't come out. And then they tell you, okay, we're gonna insert the dye you may feel some cramping so just as a heads up so i'm like okay okay here we go this time around i'm so thankful this doctor inserted the dye slowly so it didn't go in with this force like i mean i felt it go in but it definitely did not feel as forced as it was the first time i'm feeling the dye going in and it feels like it feels like this heat like it felt like heat and cramping so then they're like are you okay are you okay and i'm like yeah i'm okay it's just a little intense tech asked me she's like have you been pregnant before and i was like no um i've never been pregnant but i have had three fibroid surgeries we're like okay um, I was like, is something wrong? And she's like, well, we're just trying to see if the, the fluid can get into one of your tubes. And I was like, okay. They were trying to get the fluid to go in the left tube and they were having like difficulty. So they had me move like my hips on the side to see if that would help the, the fluid get in and nothing. And so I think um, the doctor had tried to push a little bit more in there and nothing was going on the left. They were like, okay, you can go ahead and, um, and get dressed. The doctor was like, well, the good news is that your right tube is completely open. Like the fluid went right in there. And he was like, as far as the left, I don't know if the left side is blocked. Um, with scar tissue or if maybe it was cut out during your surgery he's like I'm not sure um, but I'm not seeing the fluid go in the left side at all and when I received those when I received that I was I took that and I was like I'm very happy that I have an open tube because I was expecting the worst. Like I was, not that I was expecting the worst, but I was preparing myself for the worst possible scenario, which is like both of your tubes are blocked. I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Like I had such a better experience this time around and I am very hopeful that we can conceive and the doctor was like yeah like you can definitely get pregnant like your tube is wide open like there was no issues getting the fluid in there like it went right in there and I was like okay I asked for a CD with the images
We're gonna burn you a CD um, so you can go ahead and go to the bathroom, wipe up, get changed, and then your CD will be ready for you in like five or 10 minutes. So I go back to the bathroom where I had my phone and my purse and everything. And when I opened up my phone, I saw this scripture. When I saw the scripture like that popped up on my phone, I knew that I was doing the right thing by getting this test done. And I knew that it was like confirmation that we are going to get pregnant soon. Number two and number three, that we are going to have a son. I felt it in my spirit. I felt it in my heart. In my soul like I, I felt so connected to my my child that I know is coming soon and I knew that everything that I went through is for him and for my my future my future babies my future children and I felt so inspired like I don't care what the doctor said about the left side the, like receiving that news that I have an open tube on the right side after having three fibroid surgeries, after everything that I've gone through, hearing that yes, you can naturally get pregnant, like it was everything. I was so happy because I had received some, some news from our fertility doctor a couple of months ago that was really heartbreaking. The normal pregnancy rates uh, in your age bracket should be about 20% a month, given the fact that you're into your third year, you're probably getting pregnant with, again, perpetuating infertility, maybe 2% a month. I didn't know that. I mean, we thought it was worthwhile for you to heal and then try. If the fibroids were having a significant effect, then they were removed and we hope you get pregnant. The next step, if we're trying to help you get pregnant, would be to probably give you a mild oral auditory agent and then do um, an intrauterine insemination. Doing, uh, having you take the oral auditory medication and then concentrating and filtering and placing your partner's sperm up into the uterus just when you're ovulating does help. If we were to try this procedure, we would do it twice, but um, certainly not more than four times. Success rates are quite a bit better. 27 to 38 percent. Mm -hmm. Pretty impressive. Next option is adoption. Next option is IVF. The doctor told me, the fertility doctor that I fired, um, told me that we have less than a two, I have less than a two percent chance of conceiving naturally given my history given my age, um, just all of these things that he was telling me was wrong. Like, yeah, you have like less than a 2% chance of ever like naturally getting pregnant. Like it's probably never gonna happen for you. I was devastated and like, I was already in a fragile place after having surgery and dealing with all of that, like the, the depression and, like all of these low feelings that I had about myself already. And when the doctor told me that, <clears throat> I was like, you don't know what you're like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, that's ridiculous. So to get the HSG and to know like that I have an open tube, it was the best news ever. It was the absolute best news that I could ever, ever receive. That was my second HSG test experience. It went so much better this time around than last time. And like I said, I don't know if it had anything to do with what I did um, days before having the HSG. I have no idea. I just know that the first time around, the left side had like, the left side some fluid was able to get in but not a lot and on the right side the fibroid was blocking it this time around the left side 
couldn't get any fluid in, but the right side was completely open. And you remember, the right side is where I had all of the fibroids and all that extra work that the doctor had to do. So it's just like really amazing the difference in results between surgeries. So we, I'm really ex excited. I'm really ecstatic about this news. It definitely gave me so much hope and so much like more faith in God going forward. And I know, I know that this is going to be the year that we conceive our child. I know it. Like I'm putting that out there. I'm believing God for it. And um, I just want to encourage any woman that is going through um, through fertility struggles, any woman, any couple that is trying to conceive, advocate for yourself, okay? Um, the only reason that I even got this second HSG is because I asked my doctor for it. I went back to my OBGYN after firing my fertility doctor and I asked for a repeat HSG to see if anything was going on. And I want to say that um, do your research and do what you can to advocate for yourself. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave it down below. But I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.